Today is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. We are parked up at Ferncroft parking area and we're going to do the basic standard loop, which is up Blueberry Ledge to Mount Whiteface and then over to Passaconaway and go down Dicey's Mill Trail. Should be about 11 miles. It is, look at how blue the sky is. There's some puffy clouds. I think it's almost 40 degrees right now at the car. A little bit breezier than, I mean the forecast for Passaconaway I think had 40 degrees as a high around two o'clock in the afternoon with a wind of three to seven miles an hour or something, really, really low winds. There's one other car besides us in the parking lot. Down in the far end, there's a porta potty, which has toilet paper and it is in need of a clean, but it's usable. So that's always a nice thing. And we're gonna head out to the road, take a right, and then take a left to get on, follow the trail for a blueberry ledge. All right, we're off. We're about two miles in now, and this is the ledge lookout. When you're coming up Blueberry Ledge or Blueberry Ledge Cutoff, they both come together in junction right there. Looking at the Ossipes, so Mount Shaw and Mount Roberts and Faraway Mountain are over there. As you can see, not much in the way of snow. So we had on First we had bare boots, then we had spikes, then we kept our spikes on way, way, way too long. And uh, we just took them off again. The trail goes over there. Yeah, I'm always, there's like a little it herd. It looks like it should go over there. No, you know what it is? It's, I think people make herd paths to go to the bathroom or whatever. I don't know. So we have bare boots right now. Take a look at how, how open this is. This is coming up the south side, south facing side. So it's, there was actually a whole hillside down there that had no snow anywhere, even in the woods. Very odd. Okay, the next thing will be the fun climb. We're at that first ledge right before the terrifying 25 climb. Looking out, I'm zoomed as far as I can go. There's a ski area over there, that's Belknap. So that would be the Belknaps. <laughs> and then the edge of Sandwich right there. This is just a cliff. I will not be going out there. And then behind the corner right here, there's a snow-covered mountain, that's Cardigan. <laughs> We're gonna go tackle the terrifying 25. Let's see what happens when you have spikes. In yeah, let's see. We're both wearing Catula micro spikes. Mine are completely rounded off, which I guess is a good thing because I'm not gonna damage them. On the other hand, they have such poor grip on ice. It's a lot of times it's just like skating on ball bearings. Is there any more ice up there? There is. There's snow and ice. Okay. There. Just what I All right. So then when where John is, he's going to grab onto one of those tree roots, I think. Right here? Yeah, and then hoist himself up, right? Um, yeah. That's how I usually do it. So. This is the you want me to go up first? edge of the thing we're on right now. Yeah, you can go up. Chikora, what? Can you see me now? I didn't zoom in at all, but Chikora was right there. I can see you a little bit, yes. Here he goes. And he's up. This is the toughest of the climbs. There's a few more. At least one more that I sometimes find tricky, but... There's more snow up here. Oh, more. Snow, will, snow will be helpful. These little holes along here I think are where they used to have like a ladder. Could use that now. In any case, that's our view. I need two hands for this. 
We're on one of the ledgy outlooks on Whiteface before you get to the summit. And I'm zoomed in as much as I can. It looks so small on my screen, but there's a nice clear view of the Prezies. Looks like Washington has a cloud that's just glancing the summit right now. And of course, this is past Conway up close. This area in here is called the Bowl. And then Pagus and Square Ledge and Chikorua and the sisters. Wanna Lancet. It's that one. There's Wanna Lancet, Wanna Lancet, Hedgehog. I get all these messed up. <laughs> anyway, there's a couple of views like this, and I'm pretty sure that there's at least one more that's higher up, and it's even better. Like they get better and better as they go, but <clears throat> this is not the first view. Oh, and let's see what's on this side. that view out and you might hear the pine siskins a beautiful day I'm still wearing a t-shirt you've got your yeah I'm keeping some of my arms from oh that's true yeah when we get back into the trees I'll take it off Okay, yeah, we still have a climb. I think that the trail goes to the left. Okay. Even though I see footprints going also to the right. Okay. Still wearing spikes. It's softening up considerably. Once we get up in the on the Rollins Trail, we'll see if it's how it is. It's not really good for snowshoeing right now because it's very chopped up. Someone came down this yesterday too, which is kind of <laughs> a little crazy. Oh yeah, this is that one step up that I don't like. Right up there. Okay, two hands for that. We are up at the junction now of Blueberry Ledge and Macrillis Trail, and there's this big open ledgy area, and there's a marker, a geodetic survey marker up on there, and a lot of people seem to think this is the summit of Whiteface, but it's not. Whiteface Summit is further that way, a couple tenths. It's nondescript in the woods. But what I think is cool about up here, and I've shown this in at least one other video, is that there is a plaque on this giant rock. There's a plaque right back in there. And interred behind it are the ashes of Louis Tainter, who worked for a logging company and was instrumental in acquiring all this land for the National Park Servi Service. So you could just so easily walk right by it and not know it's here. And I think that's really, really interesting little historical tidbit. You can look up. There's a nice article about him. I think it was written by the Wana Lancet Outdoor club. I'm not sure. I think so. In any case, wow, it's really, really warm. And the snow is like, what do we call that? Like corn snow out in the sun. All right. Ready? I'm ready. I think that there was a site like maybe up in this area. This was one of the camp um, shelters that they removed was up in this area or it could have been over here I suppose there's no water up here though that's the problem at least Camp Rich has water maybe there is water and I just don't know it that's oh, beautiful there was only one other car in the parking lot we didn't see anybody today I don't think they came up blueberry I, I don't think they did either they might have it was hard to tell. There's one set of footprints going up and one set coming down. The one coming down was obviously from yesterday. And we usually run into people, though, just doing, like, past Conway in the afternoon. Yeah. So maybe we'll see somebody later today. Okay. I'm going to go hit the 
summit, which you just, if you just walk on the trail, you've hit the summit. We are on Dicey's Mill Trail now, heading up to Pass Conaway. It's only a couple tenths. And then if you wanted to, you can loop. Nobody's been out there, it looks like, but this way is Walden. And that comes down when you leave the summit. Instead of going left and coming back out the way we're going in, right there, you can go right and you come out this way. It's quite steep. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's fun. It's a nice little change of pace if you want to do something like that. There's open water flowing right here. It's a good flow. And we are right below the Camp Ridge tent site, which is not really marked anywhere, but that is a water source for it. And it's a, it's a real tent site. It has a privy, which I showed in one of my other videos. And we are still wearing spikes. Coming over on the Rollins Trail, it's pretty uneventful. There's like a couple little places where you can peek out into the bowl or look back. There's one spot where you can look back and get a pretty good view of Whiteface, but overall it's just kind of a up and down, relatively flat ridge between the two. We saw one other person right as we were leaving the summit of Whiteface. So I thought he would catch us, but maybe he wasn't, was planning to go down the ledges. I don't know. I mean, obviously someone did it recently, so people are doing it. Okay, we're still wearing spikes. I don't think we're going to need our snowshoes today. We're up on the little outlook before you get to the summit of Pass Conway. And looking this way is Sandwich Mountain over here. And then the foreground are the Osceolas and behind it, I got a tree in the way. There's a ski slope with a little bump. That's Tecumseh. Actually, this isn't the Osceolas, sorry. Osceolas are over here behind this. Those are the Tri-Pyramids. Yes, that's what that is. So this is North Tri-Pyramid right here. This is South, and middle is that bump. And then, of course, over here, out in the distance are the Kinsmans, and then Cannon, and then Franconia Ridge. I can't zoom in any further on this. And then Garfield, and then way out there's like two white slides that's on the twins it's pretty good views from here you can't sit down and get any views though that's the problem we are at the one water crossing on this route well the one serious water crossing but this tree has been here <clears throat> and that's what we're gonna use you wanna go ahead sure oh it's pretty wide Piece of cake. All right, two more miles roughly until we're back at the car. It's pretty flat from here on out. We are finishing up our hike right now. So this morning we walked up this road and turned on this bridge right here. Squirrel bridge. We need that sign. And then when we came out, come out, Dicey's Mill comes out up here. It goes right through somebody's house. Like <laughs> they're nice enough to let us access the trailhead by walking through their yard, basically. It's a, it's like a farmhouse with a huge field. And we just saw three mountain bluebirds tooling around in there and a few butterflies. They look like commas. I'm a little surprised they're out now and I don't know what they're gonna do when they get a big batch of snow tomorrow. But the mileage total is gonna be around 11 miles. We did not go out to the 
past the Conway viewpoint, which adds a couple tents each way. Um, it didn't look like it had been broken. There was one set of footprints heading out towards the top of the Walden Trail and they were not supportive at all, so I stepped in them and went up to my shin, so just wasn't feeling it. Uh, I think last spring we broke our way out to the viewpoint and there was like a lot of blowdowns and it was just kind of gnarly. I don't need to do that now. But yeah, successful hike. We saw one hiker and two local people who are out just for like a walk at the bottom right now. We chatted with them for a little bit. You can see here somebody walking their dog that parked in the parking lot. So, very, very, very quiet day. It was nice. Everything was super soft and slippy. It actually made for pretty fast conditions on the descent. And we took off our spikes right after doing that water crossing. I mean, you could have taken them off beforehand, but I like to have them on to do the water crossing. So, yeah, it was a lovely day.